My name is Greg Bailey. I am the University Archivist here at Iowa State out of Special Collections and University Archives in Parks Library. We are here in the armory on Iowa State University's campus. The earliest known references to an armory started in 1871 um, by the Board of Trustees, calling for an armory to be built on campus. It wasn't again until the 1880s that another movement was called for uh, in the annual reports of the university for an armory to help support the mission of Iowa State and its land-grant aspects with military education. But it wasn't until 1917 when full movement started on the construction of an armory on ISU's campus. Those actions stalled largely because of World War I and the increase of material costs and the rarity of supplies such as iron girders and things like that. It wasn't until 1919 that actual movement on an armory came to full fruition when the college put out calls for bids on materials uh, for uh, the building of the armory. In 1920, the construction started on campus uh, with oversight of Thomas Sloss, the superintendent of the grounds that built the armory, and it opened in 1921, the fall of that year. And on December 16, 1922, a fire uh, engulfed the armory and gutted the whole building, taking with it all of the military equipment stored there, estimated to be up to $150,000. Construction began in the spring that following year, as soon as the uh, weather permitted, and was built and opened in 1924. So the armory has always been home to the ROTC programs here at Iowa State University. It has housed offices, classrooms, equipment, and the firing range for the programs. As with times, the needs of the university have changed, and the armory has become home to many other non-military study programs. In 1946, the men's basketball team moved to the armory from State Gymnasium, as the attendance demands had outgrown the capacity of State Gym. The armory held 5,000 seats, and in 1956, an additional 3,500 were added, along with a concrete floor. The armory would be home to the men's basketball team until 1971 when it moved to Hilton Coliseum. So the armory has been home to many other activities on campus as well. Large gatherings and concerts, extension shows, open forums were held in the armory because of the large space in a climate controlled situation so they wouldn't be facing storms and things outside. One of the first things that students actually had as an opportunity to do on campus was visit the armory for freshman days and for registration on campus. Freshman days really was an orientation period for incoming freshmen where they would learn cheers, rallies uh, about different traditions at Iowa State and as well as starting to get the registration process underway as new freshmen on campus here at Iowa State. So the Armory hosted pep rallies and barbecues surrounding homecoming the Friday night before the big game. The homecoming queen would be crowned during these evening festivities, as well as pep rally talk from the football coach in front of students and alumni. Commencement and commissionings were also common occurrences in the Armory, as these activities had outgrown state gymnasium, and weather was always a consideration with holding these activities at Clyde Williams Stadium. Visha also found a home at the Armory for some of their events, such as the annual dance, horse show, and stars over Visha. In the 1970s, the Armory was set up for intramural sports with options such as badminton, tennis, volleyball, and basketball. In the summer of 1980, the Department of Public Safety and Parking moved into the Armory. In 1990, the College of Design was allocated space within the Armory for design studios. Since that time, they have remained and renovations were done in 2012 to add more facilities. So the Armory has served ISU for nearly 100 years in many aspects, and today it still is an integral part of the student learning process.